Welcome to Wannabe Clutter Free, formerly Wannabe Minimalist, the podcast for busy families who are tired of the chaos, fed up with being overwhelmed, and ready to enjoy life again. Each week, we talk about how to let go of the clutter so that you can focus on the things that actually matter. And it's not just physical clutter. We talk about the mental and emotional stuff too, because if it's holding you back, it's time to ditch it. I share what I've done in my own life to declutter, organize, and calm the chaos, but you won't just hear it from me. There are amazing guests too. It's practical, doable, and simple for those of us that want to be clutter-free. You're listening to The Wannabe Minimalist Show with Deanna Yates, episode number 60. On today's show, we're exploring seven physical and seven mental benefits of decluttering and why it's so important for busy families. In fact, I would go so far to say as it's a must for all moms. Time and time again, I hear from overwhelmed families, moms in particular, who tell me that they are exhausted, burnt out, and stretched too thin. My first piece of advice is always to get your home and life decluttered. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, exhausted, or burnt out, or stretched too thin, then listen on to find out why decluttering is the first step and to discover the 14 benefits that will make you want to declutter right now. Hey there, my wannabe minimalist friend. Welcome back to the show. My name is Deanna Yates, and I am the creator of littlegreenbow.com and the host of this podcast, The Wannabe Minimalist Show. If you're new to the show, then welcome. I'm thrilled to be on this journey with you. On this show, I discuss topics ranging from decluttering and organizing to simple living and creating better mindsets around minimalism. And for the purpose of this show, my website, courses, and my personal life, I define minimalism as intentional living. It's all about living by design and not by default. Go ahead and keep the items that mean the most to you and let go of the things holding you back from the life you truly want to be living. My mission in life is to help you do just that. So today we're exploring seven physical and seven mental benefits of decluttering and why it's the number one step in taking back control of your life and home so you can overcome the overwhelm of raising a family and trying to do all the things. Because let's be honest with ourselves, clutter makes us a bit crazy. When we look around our homes and there is stuff everywhere, it's impossible to relax. There's a pile in the living room to deal with, laundry to fold and put away, the kitchen counters loaded up with stuff, and all of this exterior clutter, it adds a whole lot of mental clutter too. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to decluttering and why it's a must for families, you know, moms especially. Before we dive in, though, I want to remind you that you can find all of the show notes for today and links to anything I mention at littlegreenbow.com forward slash 60. Again, that's littlegreenbow.com forward slash the number six zero. And I actually have a lot of reference points today, so it's really something you're going to want to check out. And there I will also have my latest free resource. It is the Tidy Home and Vibrant Life Starter Guide. And people have really enjoyed this free download. It is a simple but super helpful guide that will show you four easy steps that you can take to create a home and life where you and your family thrive. It is completely free and it's my way of helping you on your journey to creating more meaning in your life without suffocating under your stuff. And with that, let's dive into the benefits of decluttering so that you can see why it's the most important first step to taking back control of your busy life. Let's start with the physical benefits. Physical benefit number one, you'll have more space. Okay, so this one is pretty obvious, but it is worth pointing out. And it's such an amazing benefit that I had to list it first. As you clear out the items that you do not use in your home, space becomes free for activity and living. Open areas make it easier to play, twirl, put up forts, work out, have sleepovers. I know I'm focusing on kids a lot with these examples, but so many of my listeners have told me that toys and kids clutter are some of their biggest problem areas. So instead of buying the latest toys, perhaps you can remember this number one benefit of having less stuff and resist the urge next time. Create that space to let your kids' imaginations run wild and create within that free and open space. And it's not just the kids who benefit from having this open area. More space means that you have room to spread out too. 
I love that I have room in my bedroom where I can stretch in the morning when I wake up or before going to bed. If I had an extra chair in there or a bench at the end of my bed, I wouldn't have that free area and I that I really love and I, you know, I would have a piece of furniture that I don't really need in that area instead. And this is just the beginning. There are 13 more benefits we're covering today when it comes to less clutter. So let's move on. Physical benefit number two, your health may improve. Clutter makes it more difficult to clean, so it can actually worsen respiratory problems, such as asthma. Cluttered homes not only allow for the buildup of dust and dirt, but pet hair and mold can be an issue too. If you suffer from allergies, these things can be a disaster to your health, and the longer you remain exposed can eventually cause chronic illness. You may not even realize you're suffering from the effects of these allergens until you clean out your environment. The more dust, dirt, pet dander, and mold that remains in your home, the harder it is for your respiratory system to function optimally. Once you declutter, you'll be able to dust and clean your home more easily because, let's be honest, it is much simpler to wipe off a clear shelf or the bathroom counter when there's nothing on it instead of working around a bunch of little things and moving everything off that flat surface first. And when it's easier, you'll actually do it more, and that will help you breathe a whole lot easier, both physically and mentally. Physical benefit number three, less clutter equals less stress. While decluttering will not cure anxiety disorders, clearing away clutter can help ease some of the stress felt in the home. According to Brenna Wren, PhD, a licensed clinical psychologist and acting assistant professor at the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at the University of Washington, decluttering really makes you feel more content. I'll link to the article in the show notes, but she states, and I quote, people with anxiety are already hypervigilant to any sort of stress response. Their stress alarm is already dialed up. Anything like clutter or anything disruptive in their environment could be one more thing that tips the scales for them, end quote. So if you feel stressed out all the time, having a neat and tidy home could actually lower those stress levels since constantly being around a mess can serve as a source of chronic stress. Physical benefit number four, decluttering improves how your digestive system functions. So this one may be surprising, but clearing out clutter can help improve symptoms like bloating, reflux, poor digestion, and inflammation. This can be attributed to the gut-brain connection because as your stress levels decrease through your space being less cluttered, your body has more energy and less oxidative stress. It may sound a bit out there, but an article from Healthline states, and I quote, high stress levels can have harmful effects on the body. In the gut, stress can increase sensitivity, reduce blood flow, and alter the gut bacteria, end quote. This leads to things like bloating, poor digestion, gas, and reflux, all things that I think I can confidently say we would all be happy to keep out of our lives. Physical benefit number five, decluttering can help you lose weight. Sounds pretty amazing, right? Well, we just talked about how clutter causes your stress levels to rise, and that can create issues with your digestive system. So it's not hard to see how having a cluttered home contributes to weight gain. If your kitchen is cluttered, it's harder to cook healthier meals at home, and food may go to waste in your refrigerator if it's stuffed full. And if stress causes you to eat more, like it does with me, well, then decluttering will definitely make an impact. Quote, there is a link between mess increased stress, and weight gain, end quote, says author Peter Walsh as he writes about in his book, Lose the Clutter, Lose the Weight, The Six-Week Total Life Slimmed Down. Now, the results in the book may be mostly anecdotal, but the book highlights stories of amazing weight loss and how dealing with clutter in their lives and homes decreased stress levels and gave the people a space to relax on the weekends. It enabled them to make healthier choices. It gave them time to dedicate to their health again. And You know, all of these are really beneficial things because as we get too busy, we don't eat as healthy. You know, if we're stressed out, the cortisol levels rise and that causes us to gain gain weight as well. You know, it really does make sense. And I'll go ahead and link to that book, um, The Lose the Clutter, Lose the Weight. Um, If you're interested in checking it out, you'll find that in the show notes as well. I'm Margaret. And I'm Amy. And together we host the podcast, What Fresh Hell? Laughing in the Face of Motherhood. Margaret, I would say you're sort of a where are my keys kind of mom. 
Correct. Sometimes a where are my kids kind of mom. <laughs> well, you're Amy more of a, we were supposed to leave 35 seconds ago, mom. I mean, touche. In each episode of What Fresh Hell, we come at a topic from our usually completely opposite perspectives. I bring the research. And I bring kind of the gimlet eye. Like, is that research really going to work, people? And almost 10 million downloads later, we're still laughing. We also talk to experts in the parenting field, plus parents with stories we can all learn from. We make each other laugh, we challenge each other's assumptions, and we have what we think is the best parenting community on the internet. Check out What Fresh Hell, Laughing in the Face of Motherhood, wherever you listen to podcasts. Physical benefit number six, clearing clutter can make home a safer place to be. It's proven, sometimes the hard way, that cluttered homes can be unsafe. How many times have you stumbled over your sneakers, or stepped on a Lego, or tripped over a box? Piles of items strewn haphazardly around your home will inevitably lead to accidents. Don't risk a twisted ankle, or worse, a broken bone, on stuff that you don't need or use anyway. So tidy it up so you can live more fully and safely in the home that you have. And physical benefit number seven, less stuff means it's quicker and easier to clean up. The fewer possessions you have, the neater your house will be and the easier it will be to keep clean. To step it up a notch, once your clutter is cleared, you can give everything a home or a place to belong. And that will make it easier to keep things tidy moving forward. Plus, when things have a place to belong, your family can help you keep it neat. Oftentimes, your family would be willing to help out more, but they just don't know how to help or where to put stuff, so they hesitate. So put it another way, they don't actually help you clean up because they don't want to make things worse for you. They don't know where it goes, and by putting it away somewhere, it might get hidden, lost, and then you'll have to spend a day looking for the stuff that they put away trying to help you clean up. So now that we've talked about some of the physical benefits, let's discuss the mental benefits. Mental benefit number one, you'll have less stress. Okay, so we already talked about having less stress as a physical benefit, but of course it's also a mental benefit. The stress we feel in a cluttered space is generally because it's almost impossible to ignore tasks that are left undone. This creates constant low-level stress and leads to the physical issues that we already discussed of wrecking havoc on our immune systems over time. But this constant low-level stress can also deplete us of energy and generate feelings of being overwhelmed. According to researchers at UCLA's Center of Everyday Lives and Families, yeah, that's a thing, it's C-E-L-F, There is a link between high cortisol, that stress hormone, in women who own homes with a high density of household objects. Now, plain English, that means that the more stuff these women had, the more stress they experienced because they associated a messy home with failure. So sadly, I can't say that I can't relate. And, you know, when my home was cluttered and messy, I definitely felt the responsibility of it all. And it did make me feel like I was failing as an adult, as a wife, as a mom. And so being able to get rid of my clutter gives me a sense of accomplishment. And when you feel accomplished, you feel less stressed. Mental benefit number two, you'll feel free to entertain more. Have you ever wanted to invite people over to your home only to keep your mouth shut because you were embarrassed by your home or anxious about what they would think if other people saw it? Well, if you are nodding along, then you are not alone. According to Dr. Robert London, a New York City-based mental health professional, he states, and I quote, clutter leads to anxiety, embarrassment, family stresses, end quote. This Feeling can keep you from enjoying the moments that make life more enjoyable and fun. And he also states, and I continue quoting, when you relieve the problem of clutter and learn to throw things away, you feel better, end quote. That will enable us to open so many more doors, that pun is intended, and not to worry about what we've shoved away and hidden in our closets or in our homes. When we have less stuff, we feel more confident about our homes, our homes are neater, and then we feel more free to invite people over. And then that increases our enjoyment of our homes and in our lives. So are you seeing the cycle here? I hope so. Mental benefit number three, you'll appreciate what you have. 
This is a catch-22 for a lot of people. They think that the more stuff they have, the more they appreciate it, but that's actually a trick. The truth is that when you are more selective about what you choose to keep and what you really like to have around you, you suddenly discover that you love all of the items that you choose. As a result, you'll appreciate what you have and you'll enjoy using those things more. Instead of wanting to go out and find more things, you keep the best items in your home and you soon realize that you did not need all of that stuff around you to be happy. And when you stop looking to acquire more things, you'll free yourself up to spend more quality time connecting with loved ones. You'll also be free to spend more time on self-care and hobbies, whether that means spending the morning reading a book and sipping coffee, journaling, getting a massage, taking a walk in nature, listening to music, or working out. It doesn't matter what it is. All it mat- all that matters is that it's important to you. It makes you feel regenerated. So by having less stuff around us, we actually appreciate it more. Mental benefit number four, you'll hone in on your unique tastes. I'll let you in on a little secret. Trends change. Okay, so that's no big secret. But what you gravitate toward and naturally love will surprisingly not change as much as you might think over time. Think about it. That's why one of the classic questions people ask when they are trying to suss out a career that they love is to ask, what did I love to do as a child? The things you love, your personal brand, and your uniqueness just gets buried under those societal pressures and the marketing messages that we are bombarded with every single day. I was recently decluttering old pictures and found an image of me in high school. The funny thing is, I was wearing the same classic Van sneaker style back then as I wear now. I honestly did not remember wearing the style way back then, but I was holding the proof in my hands. It turns out that my preferred style actually hasn't changed as much as I thought it had over the years. Sure, it's progressed. Things have gotten much better, but the building blocks were always there. So as you declutter the items in your home, you may discover that you don't like some of those things you're holding on to anymore because, you know, you bought them, they were trendy, and you, you know, purchased them because you thought they were the things you were supposed to have. Or you might go back and find some of these classic things, these classic pieces that really fit your style and, you know, run with it. But the truth is that you'll never know unless you go through it. Decluttering helps you see clearly how your style and taste have evolved and changed, or if you're like me and stayed pretty classic. The good news is that you are free to keep the items that you're drawn to. These are the items you love the most, whether that's in your closet, your furniture, home goods, or your decor. The decluttering process will give you the clues to what colors, patterns, and fabrics you now prefer. Once you understand what you like, you'll naturally become more decisive, and you'll waste little time selecting what you need or want in the future. This has been a game changer for me when shopping. I can now tell in an instant if something will fit with my home or in my wardrobe, and if it doesn't, it's an automatic and easy no, which makes it so much easier to keep my home less cluttered because I'm able to keep out a lot of the things before they even come into our home and become a problem. Mental benefit number five is you'll enjoy cleaning. That's right. You'll enjoy cleaning more. Maybe it still won't be your favorite thing to do, but the reason we hate cleaning so much when our home is cluttered is because one, we don't know where to start, two, it takes so much prep work to clean anything, and three, we know it won't make much of a difference because things will still feel messy even if they're no longer dirty. But as you clear out the stuff, that all that extra stuff from your home, cleaning gets easier because there's less to do. You won't have to tidy up first, or if you do, it can be completed in minutes instead of hours. And when you clean, things will remain cleaner for longer because there are fewer places for dust, dander, and dirt to gather. Plus, it's easier to clean a smooth surface when it's uncluttered than it is to clean the nooks and crannies and all those little items you have stuffed and crumpled into corners and closets. We already talked about that as a physical benefit, but mentally, you will enjoy the cleaning process more. I know, it's a shocker for me too because I absolutely hate cleaning, but when it's easier, I do enjoy it more. Mental benefit number six, decluttering the home leads to a decluttered mind. When our homes are a mess, 
Our minds are a mess, and this is the premise behind Gretchen Rubin's book, Outer Order, Inner Calm. You may remember her name from her breakout success, The Happiness Project, and if you haven't read either book, I highly recommend them both, and we'll leave links in the show notes so you can pick them up. And to keep the clutter down, go ahead and opt for the Kindle, Nook, or the e-reader version. But I completely agree with her reasoning that when we feel unorganized and our home feels chaotic, it becomes so much more difficult for us to find what we need focus on the important things in our life, and give ourselves the much-needed space to breathe, live, and just be in our homes. As we let go of these extra items, think things we don't actually use, we can free up our space and our minds to focus on the things that mean the most to us. Maybe that's spending more quality time with your family instead of always feeling like you're cleaning up after them, or taking some time for self-care or catching up with your friends. The point is that there are more important things in life than stuff, and decluttering helps us clear our minds so that we can get back to those truly important things. Mental benefit number seven, you can increase your energy by letting things go. If I could give you an energy boost elixir, you'd be all over it, wouldn't you? Of course you would! People are saying all the time how they wish they could bottle up their kids' energy for themselves. I'm constantly hearing from busy parents, and moms especially, about how tired they are all the time. They are so busy that they claim they do not have time to declutter. I totally understand where they're coming from. But here's the thing. Clutter in the home makes us tired. A Princeton University Neuroscience Institute study found that people with a cluttered home experienced increased exhaustion as a result of expanding mental energy on the stress that's caused by a messy environment. In that same study, researchers explained that being aware of and annoyed by your existing clutter will have a negative impact on your mental state, thus increasing your levels of frustration, which may lead you to make decisions you would not normally make with a clear head. Now, I know I certainly don't make my best decisions when I'm cranky and frustrated. How about you? But the final point I want to make about decluttering and increasing your energy is that it significantly cuts down on decision fatigue. Now, decision fatigue is the idea that after making many decisions, a person's ability to make additional decisions becomes worse and it makes us emotionally and mentally exhausted. All the stuff sitting in a home that is not loved, used, or thought to be beautiful is a delayed decision, and even just seeing these items is enough for one's brain to start tallying up all the items that need to be dealt with. This procrastination and decision fatigue are contributing to that near-constant feeling of being tired. I actually did a podcast episode on procrastination clutter. It's episode 55, and I'll make sure to link it in the show notes so you can check it out. But as we deal with our clutter... We can mentally detach from the stuff and this idea that we might need it someday. And we can get it out of our homes, which reduces our decision fatigue. And that is a much less mentally draining environment to be in simply from being in our home. We are able to increase our energy because we're able to breathe a little bit easier, both physically and mentally. To recap those seven physical benefits to decluttering, they are... One, you'll have more space. Two, your health may improve. Three, less clutter equals less stress. Four, decluttering improves how your digestive system functions. Five, decluttering can help you lose weight. Six, clearing clutter can make home safer. Seven, less stuff means it's quicker and easier to clean up. And the seven mental benefits of decluttering are, one, you'll have less stress. Two, you'll feel free to entertain more. Three, you'll appreciate what you have. Four, you'll hone in on your unique tastes. Five, you'll actually enjoy cleaning. Six, decluttering the home leads to a decluttered mind. And seven, you can increase your energy by letting things go. Now that you know some of the awesome benefits of decluttering, I want to help you make progress on your decluttering efforts as quickly as possible. So here are three quick and simple tips to get you going. One, start small and stay consistent. I want you to resist the urge to tackle your entire home in one weekend. I've talked about it before, and I know it sounds tempting, but you're already tired. So in order to be the most effective, start small. 
Set a timer on your phone for 10 minutes. Choose one place in your home, your closet, a drawer, a room. Pick the one area that's driving you the craziest and concentrate there for the full 10 minutes. Do this consistently at least once a day for a week and you will be amazed at how much progress you can make. In fact, take a before picture so you can see for yourself because you will not believe it. And then I want you to share it with me. Please, if you are comfortable doing it and if you're brave enough, I want you to tag me on Instagram or share it in the Wannabe Minimalist group on Facebook. Come on over again. It's a free group. But I want to be able to encourage you and just show you what is possible when you put your efforts in the right area. So that's number one. Number two is don't think too much about it. So many times we keep things because we might need it someday, but it's time to stop living for the someday and to start living for your current life. I want you to live your current life to the fullest. If you need more help with this, check out episode 59 of this podcast. I'll link it in the show notes. I want you to make a rule for yourself that if you have not used something in a year or whatever time period you set, it can be longer, it can be shorter. A year generally tends to be a good amount of time, and especially in this last year, if you haven't used it, you probably don't need it because we were all using as much as we could and as creatively as we could in our homes. So if you haven't used it or you've even forgot that you had it, I want you to make the decision that that is your rule and you will donate it because setting this rule helps combat that decision fatigue that I discussed earlier, and it makes it so much easier. So make the rule and stick to it. The only caveat here are family heirlooms. Obviously, we're not using those on a regular basis, although I would encourage you to use the ones you can. Those are sentimental clutter, and it can be tackled at a later time. So when you have more energy and you can come at that stuff with a clearer mind, so you have permission to put those off on the side if you are really just starting and it's just too overwhelming. And then three, I want you to make a plan to donate. One of the biggest hurdles I hear about from listeners and readers is that they've gone ahead and decluttered. That part wasn't as difficult as they thought. But now that stuff, it is sitting in a pile in their home or in their garage. So to get over this hurdle, make a plan to get the items out of your home. The truth is you will not get to realize any of these 14 benefits we talked about today if the stuff does not actually leave your home. If it's your garage, that doesn't count. It doesn't, it has to leave, physically leave any of the property that you live in. So I want you to find a place that is near you and plan for a weekly stop as part of your regular errands. The less you have to think about it, the more likely it will happen. Or you can do what one of my community members does, and she puts all of the stuff on the curb with an ad in the free section on her local Craigslist. You could also do this with the local Buy Nothing group on Facebook, or if you're part of Nextdoor, that would work too. She loves that it's hassle-free for her, and that's what keeps her decluttering and going after the vibrant life that she truly wants to be living. So it's all about finding the right way to donate that makes sense for you, but you have to make a plan to get it out of your home. And those are the three ways that you can start decluttering right now. I hope you liked today's episode, and if you'd like to continue the conversation, I invite you to come on over and share it in the Wannabe Minimalist community on Facebook. The group, like I said, is completely free, and the conversations over there are really great. I'd love to hear if today's episode and these seven physical and seven mental benefits inspired you to start decluttering. Come on over and tell me about it in that Wannabe Minimalist community. I'm excited to hear from you and offer encouragement on your journey towards less stuff, more happiness, and a vibrant life that you and your family deserve. And don't forget, if you would like to get your free copy of the Tidy Home and Vibrant Life Starter Guide, which will help jumpstart your efforts, you can grab it and all of the show notes for today's episode at littlegreenbow.com slash 60. Once again, you can get the show notes for today on my website at littlegreenbow.com forward slash the number 60. The Tidy Home and Vibrant Life Starter Guide is a simple but super helpful guide that will show you four easy steps you can take to create a home and life where you and your family thrive. Yes, it talks about decluttering, but that is just part of what you will find inside. It's completely free and my way of helping you on your journey to creating more meaning in your life without suffocating under your stuff. That just about wraps it up for today's episode, but before I go, I do want to take a minute to say thank you for listening to this podcast. I appreciate that you choose to spend some of your time with me, and I hope that the information I provide is helpful and inspiring. 
And if you have anything you would love for me to cover and discuss, please feel free to reach out. I'd love to hear from you. You can let me know how else I can serve you and the topics that you find most helpful. Feel free to tag me on your Instagram stories. I'm little.green.bow on the platform. Please don't forget the dots. Or you can email me at deanna at littlegreenbow.com. And if you enjoyed today's episode and have not done so already, please be sure to subscribe to be notified of new episodes wherever you prefer to listen to podcasts. And if you feel so inspired, I would love your help to spread the word if you could leave a review so that more people can find us and discover the benefits of a minimalist lifestyle. I would really appreciate it. Oh, and one final note, I do want to let you know that I will be coming to you every other week in the summer. I'm really trying to live my most vibrant life as well. I do like to practice what I preach, and I want to spend some of this quality time with my daughter before she gets to go back to in-person school. So we're having a lot of fun this summer which does take up a lot of my time, and it means that I will be coming to you with a new episode every other week. All right, cheers. See you in two weeks.